Mexico's Train Maya is an impressive 1,554 kilometer train route that circles the Yucatan Peninsula. In this series, we take you with us as we explore the entire route. From amazing archeological sites, crystal clear lakes, amazing beaches, colorful colonial towns, magical cenotes, and delicious local foods, we experience it all. Welcome to Chlem. We're going to be spending the next week in this cute little seaside town, which is just about 10 minutes up the road from Progreso and only 30 minutes from Merida. Believe it or not, this is the backyard of our Airbnb. So I'm not sure how much exploring we're gonna do this week, but we will take you along when we do go exploring. And today we are going to grab breakfast at a very popular little place that was recommended to us by Gringos R Us. And then we are going to head over to Raccoon Island. Breakfast at Kayanda Cafe was excellent. The bacon was delicious, the eggs were fantastic, and the biscuits and gravy were solid. Uh, having spent most of my life in North Carolina, I have high standards. Uh, they weren't some of the best I had, but for Mexico, super impressive. Definitely enjoyed it. So now we've driven over to the Progreso side, and we're now we're at El Cochito. Uh, which this is also known as Raccoon Island. So we're gonna go check it out, see how much it costs, and see how we get to the island. So unfortunately, uh, Raccoon Island, uh, they were closed today because of the le level of the water. Yeah, so they weren't running boats back and forth to the island. So we will try again later in the week. Uh, but now we have come to Pig Beach, which as the name suggests, they release pigs on the beach. So let's go check it out. So we found out at Pig Beach, they let out the pigs at 11 and three, and it's almost 3 p.m. right now. We've got about five minutes. You can buy food for the piggies in the little store. Georgia made sure the dog got some attention too, so he didn't feel left out. So today we drove about 45 minutes to the archaeological zone of Eshkambo. Uh, the entrance fee was 95 pesos each. And one thing to know is that um, we're staying in Chilem, but the neighboring town of Progreso is actually a cruise ship port for Carnival Cruise Lines. And today is uh, a day that there is a cruise ship in port, and this is a very popular uh, excursion. So there is a very large tour bus here. I'm guessing if you come on days where there isn't a cruise ship in port, you could probably have the place to yourself. So you may want to check that on. The success of this site was due to their salt production, which they traded with neighboring Mayan groups.
So it's really cool. You can climb every structure here. There's nothing off limits. Yeah, it's really fun. And one very interesting thing here is this is the first archaeological zone we've seen with an actual church in it. We've seen a couple where they had put like a cross on top of the pyramid, but here there's a full on church. In addition to the cruise ship passengers, we also found many iguanas enjoying the midday sun. So when you get here, either on your way in or way out, you should stop at these other groups of pyramids. Yeah, there's a second group that's probably about 500 meters down the road uh, and definitely worth checking out. It's more like tucked away into the forest. Uh, this site was built and occupied between 300 and 550 AD. So it is one of the earlier sites for this area of the Maya Loop. So less than five minutes from the archaeological zone is Salinas Rosadas. Uh, this is kind of like an alternative option to uh, Las Coloradas that we saw when we were in Valladolid. Um, it is a little bit cloudy today, so I can't make a direct comparison, but it does look like it is a lot less pink. However, it is a lot less expensive. We paid 350 pesos each at uh, Las uh, Coloradas, mm -hmm. and here uh, we only paid 20 pesos each, so it is a night and day difference. Um, we also did see on our way in a couple of flamingos, but they were kind of too far off to get a picture of, so hopefully we can walk around here and maybe see some flamingos or some other birds, and maybe the sun will poke its head out and we can see how pink it really is. When the sun finally did come out, the water was definitely more of an orange color than the bright pink we saw at Las Coloradas. So this is our last full day here in Schlem, and as you can see, uh, quite the uh, weather uh, we're having here. So this was our Airbnb for the past week in Chelem, and it was definitely one of our favorites. Now, up these stairs is the second floor unit, which someone else owns, but they weren't here while we were here, so we had the place to ourselves. If you're staying with family, it's kind of cool because there is a full separate kind of hotel room over here with its own full bath and bed and AC unit. We did not use that at all. Um, and then across the way here is the unit that we stayed in. Behind the main door here, you'll see that there is a washer and dryer. Down this hall here to our right, we have a spare bedroom we use to charge and store things. 
and a full bathroom. Then further down the hall was the master bedroom that we slept in, lots of closet space there, AC unit there, and then full bathroom right here. Then we have a nice big kitchen. There was not an oven, but there was a good electric stove top. I see big dining room, beautiful TV, lovely large couch, AC unit in the main living space. And then of course, this is what made this unit so fantastic, is with this big dining table out here. We had lounge chairs here that even had a kayak if we wanted to use it private pool which is a bit dirty after yesterday's insane windstorm uh, and then there of course is the ocean we didn't eat out a lot during our week in Schlem, but we enjoyed our breakfast at Kayonda Cafe. Imperia del XIX and Progresso had amazing seafood, especially their delicious coconut shrimp. We didn't get to experience Raccoon Island, but from other videos we've seen, it looked like it would be a great time. Big Beach was also a fun experience. That absolutely gorgeous Airbnb set us back $1,007 for seven nights. We spent $84 on transportation, $13 on entertainment, $82 at bars and on alcohol, just $126 at restaurants, $115 on groceries, and $13 on utilities, one Telcel recharge. That grand total, $1,440 or just $206 a day. Not too shabby for that amazing view. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them down below. If you haven't already, check out last week's video where we explore Valladolid.